This, my friends, is the regular season finale. So the Volview, week 13, in-state rivalry, although really it's not that much of a rivalry, Tennessee versus Vanderbilt. The Volview starts right now. Tennessee. Yes, indeed it is. The Vol View right now, 3.30 Eastern tomorrow. Tennessee takes on Vanderbilt in the final home game of the season for the Vols. Uh, I mean, last, last game in general. I might have mistakenly said last week that it was the home finale when they took on Georgia. Uh, got <laughs> got blitzed by Georgia. But, uh, you know, I, I, so I, I, I apologize for that. I don't know why I thought the Tennessee Vanderbilt game was in Nashville, but it is not. It is in Knoxville and is, of course, senior day for the ball. So what to make of this season for Tennessee is really what the, the vibe of the segment is because, listen, I, and I'll just go ahead and put this up. Uh, Tennessee's a 27-point favorite. Missouri, I'm sorry, Missouri. Vanderbilt is is awful, beyond awful. That's usually how their football program is. That And, and listen, in their defense, their baseball program, dang good. Okay, it's one, it's one of the premier base, college baseball programs in America. Has been for a very, very long time. They've sent a lot of guys to the big leagues. Uh, their football leaves a lot to be desired, and they will always, and I do mean always, be little brother to the Vols. So go and put up the final score. I don't think it'll be particularly close. 49-13 to 13 Tennessee. Again, Vols are 27-point favorites, and for good reason. Uh, Vandy is, is again, beyond terrible. Uh, Vandy has not beaten a team in the Southeastern Conference this season. They're coming off of a 47-6 to 6 Drubbing, I guess, is how you could you could put it against the Vander, against the South Carolina Gamecocks, who have kind of been disappointed this season. But Tennessee's going to blow out Vanderbilt and get to eight and four and finish the regular season eight and four. What to make though this Tennessee season? So I predicted, and clearly I was quite wrong on this, that the Vols would make the college football playoff as the number three team. I said we go eleven and one. The one loss would be to Georgia, and while we would not win the SEC East, the strength of schedule would be highly impressive. You would have beaten Florida on the road. You say Florida. Bryson, five and six Florida. Could miss a bowl game. Yes. Tennessee's cursed in Florida. Two wins at the Swamp since 1977. They can't beat Florida. They could beat Florida in Gainesville, which they haven't done since, was it 2003, I think it was? Like, that's that, that'd be a, a big-time accomplishment. On the road against Alabama, we see Alabama's playing as of late. That would be, you know, something to, to hang your hat on. Beating Missouri would be, in, would be uh, you know, uh, again, something else to, for Tennessee to, to hang their hat on to as, for an impressive resume. 11-1, they get to the playoff. Now, even if they did, I'm not going to lie to y'all, looking at the college football playoff landscape, I actually don't think they would get in, uh, despite a solid strength of schedule, just because of how much how much of a, a, a cluster it is to try and fight and get those last couple of spots uh, in in the college football playoff, obviously this still being a four team playoff, but look, Tennessee comes into the season. They were I think eleventh ranked in the nation. They took on uh, Virginia. It was in Nashville. Had a, a buddy of mine go there. That game is, is a great atmosphere. Twelfth ranked in the country. I apologize. Twelfth ranked in the country. Tennessee got as high as ninth in the country before a it, it, probably one of the more unimpressive wins of the year. Kind of. Barely escaping Austin P by the skin of our teeth, although the score may not indicate it. Of course, you got losses to Florida, you got losses to Alabama, you've got losses to the Missouri Tigers. So, like it's it's and then of course a loss most recently last week to Georgia. And I was there at that game, and it was listen, it was a great atmosphere from the sense of it, the fact that it was the loudest Neyland Stadium had ever been over a hundred and 30 decibels. When I tell you that place was deafening, I, it, it was, you could not hear it, anything. And we were under like a, we were under like the second deck where we were sitting. So it was even louder, like just reverberated where, where we were at. So it was an incredible, incredible uh, moment there. 
in Knoxville. Tennessee actually scored a 75-yard touchdown on the, on the first play from scrimmage and, of course, went down from here. Uh, from there, Georgia outscored us 38-3. to And uh, Carson Beck played unbelievable. Brock Bowers is by far the best tight end in college football. I think he's going to be a top-10 pick in this upcoming draft. Tennessee lost. They were supposed to lose. Georgia's the best team in America and the back-to-back -back defending champions. For the Vols, though, what is the optimistic approach or the optimistic viewpoint at the end of this year, the optimistic vol view, so to speak, is to use the name of this this very segment. You're going to beat Vanderbilt. You're going to go eight and four. You're going to get a solid bowl game, probably against like an NC State or somebody. You know, a solid ACC team. Although, does that really exist? That conference is abysmal. But you hope to finish nine and four. We'll see how that goes. And then you go into next season, where it's okay. Alabama is a, uh, is a home game. Florida's a home game. Can't can't win in the swamp, but we can beat we can beat Florida at home in Neyland Stadium. We've done it twice within the last decade, so it is it is very doable, especially where we're at from a talent perspective compared to them and a coaching perspective, frankly. And as far as the coach, that's something to, to hit on as well. Is the fact that Josh Heupel? What did we know him as coming into the season? We knew him as this guy who liked to throw it a lot, 30, 40 attempts in some instances per game, throwing it all over the yard. Run the football here and there. Keep the defense honest, and they could run the football efficiently. But this year, and this is not a shot at the guy because I genuinely like him as a human being, and I've, 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 I wanted to get him to get to a, a certain level so much, but he, he just couldn't. Is is Joe Milton, who has I think inarguably the best arm in college football, but not terribly accurate, and not a great. Uh, not great field vision, doesn't see it terribly well. Uh, he, you know, he threw an interception. He's thrown multiple interceptions this year where he like stared the guy down. Like that's that's kind of a problem that's that's become apparent over the course of the season. Uh, so listen, Joe is what he is. I'm, I'm not going to be brutal on the guy, but Josh Heupel in a major way, and it kind of started with the South Carolina game. It moved to the Texas A&M game after that. Is the fact that Tennessee moved from a throw it all over the yard type of offense to run the football, kind of conservative not taking a lot of shots down the field because, frankly, we don't really trust our quarterback to to to, to hit sh uh, deep shots and, and be efficient and accurate in doing so. So Josh Heupel, I know Tennessee fans hate him. Why is beyond me. Uh, he's, he's the best coach we've had since the Hall of Famer, Philip Fulmer, and that's, I think, yeah, all false balls fans would agree with that. But he had to he had to literally change his offensive scheme and philosophy midseason. That's not an easy thing to do, and props to him for adjusting Tennessee might be sitting here at seven and five because Kentucky was a dicey one, as was Texas A&M. I mean, Tennessee could be sitting here, you know, they need to win this game to make a bowl game. So Josh Heupel deserves a lot of credit for that, for um, for for changing the offense and allowing us to to win the games that maybe we wouldn't have won had he not adjusted, had he not adapted. That's what any great coach does. But next year, this kid, and I hope I'm saying his last name correctly because I've heard multiple pronunciations of it, Nico Iamaleva. And I hope, Nico, if you're watching, that I'm saying your name correctly. Uh, in on many recruiting websites, the best quarterback in high school football coming into Tennessee. It was either him on some websites, it was Arch Manning, who's at Texas on other websites. He will be the guy in 2024. And um, you have the number one high school quarterback pairing with one of the smartest offensive coaches in college football. We assume Tennessee will will recruit well. They have good depth at wide receiver. They'll go. They'll be active. The transfer portal. Tennessee always has a good offensive line. Yeah, balls will be back in 2024. I'm just telling you that right now. They will be back in 2024, and I'll put up the final score one more time. They will knock off Vanderbilt once again, 49 to 13 in Knoxville in Neyland Stadium. Finish with an eight and four regular season record, and then of course we'll see next week who the ball game is up against. Again, probably an ACC team, although we'll we'll see. That's 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 TBD. It's to be determined. But the Vols will finish the season strong. There's still a lot of good positives, a lot of good takeaways. Again, we got to keep perspective. And I'm talking to Vols fans right now. We got to keep perspective on this, okay? Last year was about as close to magical as we've had in some time in Knoxville. I mean, at one point, Tennessee was the number one ranked team in all the country. We beat Alabama into the long losing streak. We destroyed teams like Kentucky. We beat Florida, which we struggled to do for in, in many instances. So. We beat LSU badly, I might add, on the road. I mean, it was, it was, but lost to Georgia on the road. The, the house of horrors for us on the road against South Carolina. It was, it was a rough end of the season. But days like that, seasons like that, that's going to come. This year's a transition year. It was. Eight and four? 
I've seen worse transition years than eight and four. Let's just put it that way. I'm just, I'm just telling you right now. So that is it. This week's edition of the Vol View. Let's get a win against Vanderbilt tomorrow, Vols. Shout out to all the seniors. Thank you for all the stuff you have done at Tennessee, helping to rebuild the culture for sticking around through some tough, tough days in 2020, especially uh, with the coaching situation and off the field stuff and whatnot. Shout out to you, seniors. God bless y'all. Hope you have a great senior day. You play well. Hopefully all the seniors get at least maybe a little bit of field action, although maybe it might not be possible for some guys, but shout out to all y'all. Tennessee will win 49-13 against Vanderbilt, and that is it for this week's edition and this regular season's edition of The Vol View. Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.